Okay, hi again. Uh, just a brief video right now. Uh, we're going to be going over part 2C, how to robustify your system identification against noisy data. And today we're going to be talking about ensemble methods. Uh, if you want to know more about this, I highly recommend Urban Fostel's uh, Ensemble Cindy paper, which is up on archive. Uh, and basically, ensembling is just subsampling the data and using those subsamples to actually generate many different models, uh, which allows you to sort of get uh, probabilistic system identification and uh, sort of uh, generate many models to sort of figure out which coefficients show up a lot and which ones don't. Uh, so what we're going to start is just add some uh, some tr some noise to our training data. So we're adding 5% uh, noise to lo this Lorenz training data. Uh, and then we're going to do our, uh, our normal thing. So uh, we're going to uh, define some optimizer whoops, to, to solve the sparse regression problem. We're going to define our model. And uh, once again, Define our uh, features for Lorenz. Uh, put in our optimizer, um, and then just model dot fit with our noisy data, with our time step, and print out the resulting model. Okay, so uh, with when we start to get to five percent noise, the models start deteriorating. Uh, so you can see it's sort of capturing the right uh, dependence for each of the terms, but some of the terms are, are getting worse. So for instance, the, the minus y term in the second equation is now about minus 0 0.5. Uh, so things are, are getting a little bit worse, but it's still roughly getting the right, uh, right model. Um, what we can do, though, is uh, just try the exact same thing, but generate like 20 or 50 models and, and then average or uh, take the median of those models to actually get additional robustness to that data. Um, so this, this is super easy in PyCindy. Uh, all you basically have to do is uh, the exact same thing. Uh, you fit the data, and now you pass this ensemble equals true. And this is basically going to take your uh, time series data and take uh, the default is to generate 20 different models where you, you subsample different parts of that time series data and generate w a, a different model for each of those subsamples. Um, so that, that'll generate 20 models. And then those come back in this model.coefficient uh, list. And so what we're going to do is uh, take the mean and the standard deviation of those 20 models and then plot them uh, to see what kind of results are we getting with these methods. Uh, and you're going to see they sort of robustify things against noise and allow you to quantify the errors you're getting in each of the coefficients. Um, so mean ensemble is, so we're going to take uh, the, the average of this list along the first axis. Uh, same thing with the standard deviation. Right. Okay, so we computed those. Um, it turns out there's another way to actually uh, sort of subsample and generate many models, and that's called library ensembling. Uh, and this is, this is a very similar technique. Uh, all you need to do is change the ensemble to library ensemble. And again, this, this is going to default to building 20 different models. But instead of subsampling your data in time to get different uh, models to generate, it's actually going to subsample your candidate feature library. Uh, so it's going to eliminate. Uh, for instance, one of those uh, terms in your library and just fit the model on that uh, smaller library. And it'll do this 20 times for different combinations of that library. Uh, and again, you can kind of see which coefficients show up uh, sort of very often despite this subsampling. Uh, and again, this gives you some, some statistics about what the which coefficients are showing up in your models. Uh, so once again, uh, we're going to run this exact same thing, but we're just going to uh, call these variables something else. Uh, so great, we, we ran that too. And now we just want to plot everything together. Um, so I already have a plotting function defined for this, although I, I got to uh, remember the name. Um, let's uh, see real quick. So 
This is just called plot ensemble results. Uh, for passing the model, the mean with the ensembling and the standard deviation with the ensembling. And then uh, same thing for the, um, for the library ensembling. So we're just comparing uh, how the performance was on this noisy Lorenz data with the ensembling methods and the library ensembling methods. And you're going to see these are sort of useful things to, to look at. OK, uh, so these, this is the kind of uh, plot you might get. So um, on the, this left plot is the ensembling results, and the uh, far plot is the library ensembling results. And you can see each of these gives you not only the coefficient value, so you're looking at the coefficient value of each of these candidate terms, where uh, the library we have is just a quadratic and polynomial in x, y, and z. <coughs> and, and lower polynomials. Uh, and you can see it's basically picking out the right terms. So like uh, the, the coefficient on x in the equation for y is 28. And it's, it's about getting 28, at least within the, the error bounds on, that, uh, on, this, on these error bar plots. Uh, and this, this is the same for all the other coefficients. All the coefficients are in this model are identified within the error bars of these, of these models. Uh, things are a little worse for the library ensembling because the library ensembling is actually chopping off one of the library terms at each, for each of these models. And actually some of the libraries, uh, very important terms might get chopped off like uh, this XY term might get chopped off. And then you're actually missing fundamental dynamics in your candidate library. Uh, so the fit is gonna be overall worse at the end. Uh, so for this very small candidate library, uh, when you truncate off terms, uh, this is actually going to uh, be a big problem. Uh, but this, this turns out to be less of a problem as your library gets bigger. Um, so, so this makes sense that the library ensembling uh, results sort of have a bit bigger error bars and uh, are a little worse than the ensembling. Uh, but still, these are both great ways to get some, some statistics about how um, how frequently your coefficients are showing up and what the error bars are on those coefficient values. Uh, and so this can really robustify things against noise and tell you something about how noise is affecting your system. Uh, so thanks for listening and we'll continue on with uh, part 2D in the next video.